Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Let's con let's continue. It. I don't know whether you watched my previous video, but never mind. So guys, today, today my mood is very good. Okay, hopefully my mood will actually transfer to you. So my dear, today I'm doing chapter two differentiation. Okay, and I'm doing this part, which is a very little small part where your teacher, maybe you don't really understand through school. That's why I'm doing this short little video. So today I'm teaching you guys limit. Wrong pen, wrong pen. Getting too excited. Sorry. Right there. Okay, okay. Calm down. So guys, today I'm teaching you guys limit, okay? So limit normally in school, we always call it lim, correct? You guys always just do it, but you guys never understand why is it like that, right? Never mind. After this video, you will totally understand. So let's look at it up. Huh? So now I'm giving you one example. You must be thinking, teacher, where this example come from? Just in case you're thinking like I simply imagine it. <clears throat> Just in case you think that I simply imagine this. This one, I purposely copy from the textbook. So you can look at the textbook. You guys can see the first example they give exactly is this one. So I just try to tell you where the source they come from. Okay, so, so it's not I simply created. So now they're giving you a graph. They're giving you the axis, the y-axis, and the equation, correct? So let's do something that all of you guys know how to do. Like let's say one day I ask you, uh, if my x is 2 now, that means let's say like, x is 2, then I ask you, oh, what is the y value? How do we find the y value? It's not very hard because we already have the equation. And all of you guys know y and fx is the same thing, correct? So since if I know the x is 2, isn't it I can sub 2 inside the equation? Okay, so let's say we sub 2 inside. Then what we will do? We will press calculator. Okay, 2 square plus 3 bracket 2 over 2. Okay, we get 5. Or that means if I draw it out, if the x is 2 that time, this particular straight line will have the y value of 5. Okay, let's say lah. So let's say next, I'm curious about 1. Okay, so what can we do? Again, we can straight away sub inside. What's so hard about it, right? Then we can just press calculator and then we get 4. So if we get 4, that means, that means if x is 1, isn't it the y value will be 4, correct? So let's say next, we continue curious about 0. So we sub 0 inside. So 0 squared plus 3, 0 over 0. Guys, maybe you won't press calculator for whatever I did just now, but this one, can I, can I, can I wish that you will press the calculator by yourself? The top, I get zero. The bottom, I get zero. I get zero over zero. And don't tell me, teacher, answer zero. No, nope. who told you that? You press calculator and see. Zero there by zero, I get max error. Max error, that means undefined. So you must be thinking, hey, teacher, why undefined? Teacher, why your graph already got the, the value? Because the graph, I copy from the textbook. Okay, you guys can look at it. So guys, okay, look at uh, so now I get undefined. Why I get undefined? Okay, now I'm going to explain something that you never ever know. So guys, normally a straight line, a normal straight line, correct? Y equals to mx plus c, correct? But you look at this equation. This equation is actually not y equals to mx plus c based on what they give you now, correct? So now this particular straight line is actually a, the moment I can get undefined now, okay? This one is actually a indeterminate form. You must be thinking, teacher, what is indeterminate form? You never know about that, but listen to me, okay? Normally, a straight line is a straight line, correct? Every single point on the straight line is possible to find, correct? But the moment one particular straight line got one particular spot, you cannot get the answer. We always call it indeterminate form. Indeterminate form is actually a straight line, okay? Got a small little hole uh, within the straight line. So that's why you can look at my straight line drawing. Do you guys realize that uh, this particular straight line you guys can see an O shape here. That is not an O. That is a hole, my dear, okay? You guys never know about that. You must be thinking, oh, did you straight line possible to have hole? Yes, possible. It's just you never learn it, okay? So now I'm showing you. So this straight line possible to have a hole there, you know? So there's a lubang, okay? So if there's a hole there, then how do we get the value? That's why we try to get the whole value. We get undefined. That's why it's indeterminate form, correct? But what if I die, die, I want to know what is the value on that particular hole? Then how do we get the answer? That's why we learn limit. So look, my dear. So now we cannot get the answer when x is zero because we get undefined. So that's why whenever we cannot get that value, but we can get others, then we, we can do limit. We can do limit x to zero using this equation. Maybe you were thinking, teacher, then what is actually the meaning, meaning of minute? Limit. <laughs> Minute is what? Limit, okay? So guys, look at this. Huh? 
this one actually when we call it we call it limit x approaching zero what's the meaning of approaching approaching means getting closer so guys whenever you couldn't get you see uh, this is a straight line you can get every single point except the hole correct you cannot get a hole never mind you can try to get the rest of it and try to get the answer of the hole the hole is just a lubang you cannot get a whole answer but easily you guys can get somewhere near the hole so you guys look at my example uh, so based on what i've just now found do you realize when my x is 2, I get 5? So when my x is 2, I get 5. When my x is 1, I get 4. Okay? I, when I tried to get 0, I couldn't get the answer. But isn't it if 2, I get 5, 1, I get 4? Isn't it if I get try to find 0 0.9, I should get something lesser than 4? If I try to get 0 0.5, I should get something even lesser. Then, my dear, I cannot get 0. But actually, 0 beside got a lot of small little number. Maybe I get some 0 0.001. 0 0.002, 0 0.003. So limit uh, is actually when you cannot find your own one, you would find somewhere near to you. Okay. So when you find somewhere near to you, that means we call it limit x approaching to zero. So approaching, that means trying towards there, but you couldn't get there, but you trying, try to get closer. Okay. So guys, you can get closer from the right side. You can get closer from the left side. It doesn't stop you from getting the answer of that particular hole that is actually the meaning of limit you guys must understand what is the meaning of limit because my next video i will teach you guys something very mind-blowing one okay my dear you guys will totally will feel like wow like you need to know what is limit like, okay so guys let's look at this huh? so now we want to limit x approaching zero then what will we do so usually we will try to sub directly sub the zero inside just now i did and i get undefined so I won't do the same thing anymore. So since I get undefined, I know I cannot direct this up. Then if I cannot direct this up, I know they are in determinate form. Whenever they are in determinate form, right? You know what you need to do before you sub? You should actually simplify it first. Is it very hard? No. Because for the moment I look at the equation, you guys realize the denominator is very simple, but the numberator, isn't it, can simplify. x squared plus 3x, isn't it, can factorize the x out, pull out the similarity. So x squared got 2x, I pull out 1, I left 1x. 3x, I pull out the x, I will left a 3. Right after I pull out, do you guys realize the x and the x, I simplify it because I can, I can, I can cut it off, correct? I can cancel off the, 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 the similarity. Isn't it? I should be left x plus 3. Can, my dear? So don't ask me, to, then teacher, just now when I sub, I don't directly sub la. I just factorize first, my dear. But normally, when you look at the equation, do you ever factorize it if it's not a limit question? You won't. So don't try to tell me that you will factorize it because supposingly you won't, you will just sub inside and get the answer, correct, my dear? So that's the reason limit la, you will always factorize it only you sub when they are in determinate form. You learn in school, you never know, right? You just do it for the sake of doing it, right? So guys, now we will sub zero inside. When I sub zero inside, I get three. You see, actually, I couldn't get the answer, right? But why I get three? Because I try to walk towards the zero. And the one I get nearer, uh, the, the one that get nearer to the hole is actually three. So that's why the answer is three. So limit means try walk towards there. Okay, I hope you guys understand. So let's look at more example. Very, very easy one. Let's look at A. Yeah? So A, let's say limit X approaching zero, three X minus one. So guys, maybe you will tell me, the teacher, this one, how to factorize, my dear. Actually, you won't always factorize. You will always directly sub first. Because you directly sub, maybe you can straight away get the answer. Let's see this one. So this one, if I sub zero inside, I press calculator, I get negative one. <laughs> no need to do anything because that means they are not in the mid, indeterminate form. You can straight away get the answer. Directly sub. Super easy. Let's look at B. B, what if they say limit X to six? X approaching six x minus 6, x squared minus 36. Again, guys, what should I do? My dear, you will never know whether they are in determinate form until you really sub inside. So let's say, don't write, uh, let's say I sub inside. When I try to sub inside, the top I get 0, the bottom I get 0, and 0 divided by 0 is undefined. So I should know all this in the indeterminate form. So since this indeterminate form, then how do we do this one, my dear? So I repeat again, once you sub inside, you will get max error. Then you know they're in determinate form. Then you must actually factorize it first. So the top, I don't think I have anything to factorize because the numerator is very simple. But the bottom, the denominator. 
Isn't it the denominator you guys learned under lower form where you guys can factorize it using just basic? So first, x squared. x squared, isn't it, is actually x times x. That's why you guys can get x squared. How about negative 36? Negative is because 1 minus 1 plus. 36, isn't it, 6, 6. That's why 36. So right after I factorize it, isn't it, now I can cancel it out because I get the common factor. So once I cancel it off, do you guys realize the bottom only left x plus 6 and top nothing to write is a 1. Okay, I already simplified it. Isn't it now I will sub the 6 inside and find the answer 1 over 12. So we cannot get the answer for the direct answer, but we try to get the one that nearer to it. I hope you guys understand by it by now, okay? And you must be thinking, teacher, so is it limit x must be 0? So you see, just now my example is 0. But do you realize when I come to here, it's actually 6 already. So please don't expect they are always zero because different questions will have different situations. Let's look at C now. So same for C. The moment I look at it, my dear, so again, I will try to press calculator. You guys can try to press. When I try to sub the three on top, okay, I feel like if I don't press, you will feel like i very lazy. So I press, okay, sorry. So I press, the top, I get zero. Then the bottom, I sub, I also get zero. Then you guys know this is an indeterminate form. So indeterminate form, then how do we do it? So indeterminate form, isn't it again, we should factorize it. How do we factorize it? This time, my example is super duper easy. The top is a general form. Isn't it general form? Always can press calculator. My A is one. My B is negative four. My C is three. From my calculator, I get the first answer. I think this one you guys learned under basic. Can write back to the bracket. I don't want the answer. I want the factorize. I want the simplest form. I get the first answer, 3. Plus 3 right back, isn't it minus 3? Second answer, plus 1. Plus 1 right back, isn't it minus 1? Same apply for the bottom. My A is 2. My B is negative 5. My C is negative 3. First answer is 3. Right back, isn't it minus 3? Second answer, isn't it negative 1 over 2? Negative right back, positive. Divide right back, times. So i just using calculator to help me to factorize it. And, well... Again, I can cancel off those that are common. Isn't it this is what I left? So since this is what I left, isn't it now I can straight away sub inside and got the answer of 2 over 7. Ta -da! That easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's look at D. D, I'm doing this. Okay, D is always student weakness. Why? Leh? Because your basic not good. Basic of what? Form 4, Chapter 4, Indices, Cert, and Logarithm. So guys, to understand this, you better have a very good basic on Cert. Yeah, I think I did a video of Cert, like from basic to advanced, like the whole thing. You just watch that video, eventually you will understand. I'll put the link on top. Is it here? Top. Okay, my dear, you guys can watch it if you guys have time, okay? It's not uh, something... I think you guys will understand also. So guys, look at this. Huh? So limit x to 4, okay? So now they're giving me this. Again, I try to sub 4 inside, guys. Actually, you just need to check the bottom because the bottom is 0. Straight away, you are undefined, man. So square root 4 minus 2. I get 0. Okay, I know they are in determinate form again. So what should I do? So whenever they are third form, right, you should actually rationalize it. How do we rationalize it, my dear? Uh, not too sure whether you guys remember, but let me write down some formula you guys learned under cert, which is quite important for you guys to rationalize any situation that need to rationalize, which is this. Cert A plus B times cert A minus B. Remember, uh, must be 1 plus 1 minus. Uh, it will be A minus B squared. For those who don't trust me, you guys can slowly expand it. You guys will definitely get that, but since I trust myself, so yep, that is the equation. So guys, how do we do this one? So look at it up. Uh, very, very easy one. So whenever you guys want to subsert, okay, and then you realize uh, you guys will get like indeterminate form. So what you guys will do is you guys will rationalize whatever that need to be rationalized. So when I look at it, I know the denominator. I want to make the cert disappear. So what can I do? The denominator part, I can times something similar to it. Based on the formula, you won't times something exactly same. You will times, now you are a minus version, right? You will times a plus version. Because a plus minus version, they guess can use the formula and the cert will disappear. That, of course, based on your basic, we all know that. The denominator, you guess times what? The numerator, you will times the same thing. Right for you guys, ah? so the top, ah, no need to expand, yeah? The top, isn't it? I left this. How about the denominator? The denominator, I can use the formula. Let me show you. Ah. Based on the formula, I know. Cert A times cert A 
will be single A. So that's why third X times third X isn't it single X? E B D. Next one, positive B times negative B isn't it negative B square? So negative two times positive two isn't it positive negative negative two square isn't it four? Well, right after I rationalize it, easy, isn't it? X minus four, X minus four can straight away simplify it. And once I simplify it, do you guys realize I, I left so X plus two. So now I can sub the four inside. Square root four, two. Two plus two, four. Ta -da! Isn't it the answer? Four. Let's look at E. I feel like my mood seriously very good. I feel like throughout the whole video, I'm very high pitch. Okay, but yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, next one, E. Again, you guys can sub seven inside. I don't want to waste my time, guys. It's an indeterminate form again. So what can we do? Again, we will rationalize it. This time, I couldn't rationalize the denominator because my denominator not even have cert. Never mind, who say you must, uh, who say you must rationalize the denominator? Sometimes you will rationalize the numberator instead. So for example, this one. This one, the top got cert, so I will try to rationalize the top. How do I do that? Same thing. This is a cert x plus 2, 3, correct? They are a minus, you will times a plus version. If they are a plus, you will times a minus version. Of course, the top times what? The bottom will times exactly the same thing. So guys, the bottom, what do I left? I write the whole thing down. Huh? So the bottom, I will left this. No need to expand it, just write it out. Okay. How about the top? Ah, the top easy. Let me show you. So third A times third A is A. Third X plus 2 times third X plus 2, isn't it? x plus 2. The set will just disappear. How about the blue one? Isn't it positive b times negative b is negative b square? So negative 3 times positive 3, isn't it, will be negative 3, 3, 9. Okay, this is what I left. If this is what I left, the top, isn't it, 2 minus 9 is 7. The bottom still the same. And I don't think I need to show you guys. You guys all know Again, I can cancel off the common factor. So after I cancel it off, isn't it? The whole equation becomes super simple now where I can start to sub the 7 in. 7 plus 2 plus 3. 7 plus 2, 9, square root 9, 3. 3 plus 3, 6. Isn't it the answer? 1 over 6. Da -da -da -da. Done. See you on the next video. And yeah, bye-bye. Okay, okay. Need to press. Bye-bye. <laughs>